Hi, I'm Dr. Tracy Lawyer out of Boise, Idaho. I want to discuss a case with you using bilateral trochlea osteochondral allograft transplantation using 16 millimeter pre-cut osteochondral allograft cores. So this patient, he is a 54-year-old male. He's a marathon runner, he used to run about 30 to 40 miles per week, comes in to me with bilateral knee pain. He was told that he'd had to stop running after he had surgery on both knees. On the left knee, he had a lateral release performed. And on the right knee, he had a lateral release with a microfracture on the lateral trochlea. So his goal was really to get back to running. On physical exam, he had mild diffusion bilaterally. His motion was pretty good, 0 to 130 degrees. Most of his pain was along the lateral trochlea or kind of lateral parapetellar. He had a stable ligamentous exam. So looking at his x-rays, these are the merchant view. His APN lateral looked pretty unchanged. He has minimal patellofemoral arthritis bilaterally. On his left knee, you can see a little bit of uh, subchondral lucency underneath the ladder, along the lateral trochlea. So MRI is bilateral knees. So on the right side, they're pretty uh, similar lesions. So on both sides, you have full thickness cartilage defects with subchondral edema. And then along the left side, there is quite a few, a little bit more of delamination along that side. So, we're, so that side is going to be a little bit worse for him. So we discussed surgical planning. I think he had gone through all the conservative management, and so he really was looking at surgery to get him back to running. So we discussed a couple options here. So I usually discuss with my patients doing arthroscopy versus an open type of procedure. So the first, with the arthroscopy, we talked about just doing a chondroplasty, and he wasn't too thrilled about that. Then we, we talked about doing a microfracture with biocartilage, and he wasn't too thrilled with that as he had failed a prior microfracture on the right knee, and it just didn't get him back to running. So then we talked about some open options in restoring those lesions. So the first one was an os open osteochondral allograft transplantation using a pre-cut osteochondral allograft core. And the second one was doing the open procedure using cartiform. I like the, I kind of recommended doing the pre-cut core as we can address that subchondroedema along with the full thickness area defect. So our plan was to do bilateral knee osteochondral allograft of the lateral trochlea using the pre-cut cores, and he wanted to start with the left knee because that was bothering him the most. So here are the arthroscopic images of the left side. His cartilage in his left knee looked fairly good, besides this part here along the lateral trochlea, where you can see a full thickness cartilage defect with, with exposed subchondral bone. So went ahead and did the open procedure. This is a lateral parapetellar approach. Really this, you know, the lesion on this left side not, doesn't look too big, but you really want to probe that area around the cartilage because what happens is there's softening and there's delamination, very consistent with the MRI. So I decided to use the 16 millimeter pre-cut core. And so there's a sizer that you can put directly over that lesion. And so as with the circle around that lesion, you can tell um, I put this, the guide pin down the guide and that was the area that was going to take care of most of that delamination along that cartilage. So really with these, I really take time to look at the graft. So you'll get the graft um, and you really just want, before you start reaming, you really just want to measure the depth of the graft. You want to look at the cartilage. You want to look at the slope of how the cartilage is so you can match it to the patient. So I take uh, most of my time on this procedure is really inspecting, measuring, and examining that graft, making sure my measurements are good. Then I go ahead and just ream over that central pin, usually about nine to 10 millimeters. Then normally, once I'm done, I usually drill the bed of that defect to allow some optimal healing, some good bone healing. And then I can place that graft. Some tips and pearls is that you can put a suture underneath that graft and then kind of, if you don't want to commit, and then start tapping it in lightly. And then if you just don't like the way it's fitting, you can use that suture to kind of pull the graft and then readjust. But this is just how you would do the graft placement. And so for this patient on his left knee, we got a good flush graft along the lateral trochlea. You can see kind of that straight on view looks very nice, but really it's that lateral view that I kind of restored that, uh, was able to restore that um, curvature along the lateral trochlea. So really, really happy with that fit on that graft. I didn't even have to make adjustments or take down any of the cartilage as well. So really good, really good fit. So six months after his left knee, uh, he did actually get back to start running, which was great, but he was having issues with his right knee. We initially had planned to do bilateral, and we said, well, let's just see how your right knee's doing, but he felt so good with his left knee, we decided to go ahead with the right knee. This is the same procedure. So now we're looking at arthroscopic images of the right knee, and you could tell this is the right knee that had that prior microfracture, and you can see some, it's a little bit larger, and you can see a little bit of fibrocartilage growth from that prior microfracture. 
And then when we look at that open, same, same uh, approach, lateral parapetellar, you can see how big that defect is along there. Again, I decided to use that 16 millimeter core, which gave us a really, really good fit along that area and covered that complete area even with the microfracture. So my postoperative course, I'm usually weight bearing is tolerated in the brace. I have the brace locked in extension for about two weeks and that's usually for soft tissue healing. I do start them with the CPM zero to 30 degrees. Our goal is to get to 90 degrees by three to four weeks. Usually uh, they're out of the brace by that four to six weeks. So really happy with this progress. So 10 months after that left knee uh, plug that we put in and five months after the right knee, he is back to running. Low mileage, but he's up to 20 miles a week. So he's very, very happy with his progress. So I like to look at this spectrum and look at everything that Arthrex has to offer because I think that they do a great job in managing all different types of OCD type lesions. So usually for my smaller lesions, about 0.5 to 1 centimeter, I'm usually looking at doing an autograft oats. When it gets into that range, 1 to 1.5 centimeters, I'm looking at the fresh allografts. And bigger than greater than 2 centimeters, I'm kind of looking at, that, um, at the bio uni. So I just really like these pre-cut osteochondral allograft cores. They're just, it just provides optimal architect architecture. So we do have the full thickness cartilage along with the bone. Again, the sizes vary as far as the depth of the bone that you're given, but that's why it's really, really important to really examine that graph before you start reaming. We get perfect viable chondrocytes and it's convenient and ready to use. Usually I'll sometimes I'll put this case on five days prior to and ask my local rep to go ahead and just get me that order. And it's usually here in about two days, which is really nice. There's two different sizes, the 10 millimeter and the 16 millimeter core. I have been going more to the 16 millimeter core as I find that the, with the MRI, the lesion is actually quite bigger than what the MRI measures. And it does have a 28 day shelf life. And the great thing about this is there's no screws, no uh, implants, it's a nice press fit implantation. So tips and pearls about using these pre-cut core allografts. So again, really just want to reiterate that you really want to examine, inspect, and measure that dia, the graft before you go ahead and start reaming. The goal is to place the graft flush. So sometimes I'll ream just a touch more, about 0.5 millimeters on that depth. And then for graft placement, if you don't want to commit, you can always put like a number two fiber wire suture and kind of lay it in the defect and then tamp, tamp in the graft nice and lightly. And if you don't like the way it's going in, the, the suture will allow you to pull out that graft. I usually drill the bed of the defect if there's sclerotic bone just to help healing. And you really, really want to pulse lavage the backside of the graft. Um, I usually soak it in ACP, but there is the option of using the angel, uh, angel PRP as well. Thank you.